Okay, energy efficiency best practice. What does it really mean in relation to your steam system? Okay, well, we're going to cut things a little short. Um, I don't drink, but I appreciate just how important that free drink is for you at 5 o'clock, all right? I am still an engineer, okay? I understand exactly where you guys are at. Okay, we're going to establish a few clear definitions. We're going to map out where we need to start. Okay, we're going to talk about how ultrasound fits in and hopefully have a little bit of fun. That's going to come at 5 o'clock anyway. Energy usage, I'm going to skip that. Plant downtime, well, we've talked about that already. Product quality and yield. Okay, I will say this real quick. I'm very big on this principle. You can't deal with efficiency on its own in the same way you can't deal with reliability on its own and the same way you can't deal with the process on its own. If you're serious about genuinely being at world's best practice, you are only ever going to get there if you start thinking about your process, your product, your whole plant sitting on a three-legged stool. And those three legs are energy efficiency, plant reliability, and process reliability and efficiency. If your process isn't efficient and isn't reliable, doesn't matter about the other two, does it? If you've got to rework whatever it is you've made, then you've just wasted your time. In the same way, if you're efficient, but you're off and on because your reliability shot to bits, it really doesn't matter. So the key point there is what you've got to picture is your plant balanced on a three-legged stool. The great thing about a three-legged stool, has anyone tried to sit on a one-legged stool? Pretty uncomfortable, right? Especially if that, if that one leg's pretty narrow, huh? Okay. What about a two-legged stool? Yeah? As you hit the corners, you can get a feel of the speed wobbles, right? When you add that third leg, you get an awful lot more stability, right? Just something to think about. Okay, so you've got equipment efficiency, okay? Whether it's your boiler, your fan, your pump, each individual unit has an efficiency. But you've also got a process efficiency. You've got raw materials coming in, you've got energy coming in, and you've got product coming out you've got an efficiency of how that material is turned into your product. You've then got an overall side efficiency, okay? We kind of covered these terms a little last year, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm happy to sort of skip, skip through them. Okay, talked about energy content of product. This is a bit of a review from last year again. Remember, you've got three main sources of waste, housekeeping and maintenance, how we run the plant, which is operation and control, and then, of course, design, how things are built. Okay, who's got an energy efficiency tree that looks a little like that? Okay, who's got a tree that looks a little like that? I'll get out of your way. Now, I've had a few people talk again this week about the low-hanging fruit, the fruit hanging down. I want to introduce a new concept to you. If you're genuinely serious about best practice, the low-hanging fruit you're talking about isn't even hanging you're talking about the fruit there on the ground. That's the low-hanging fruit. That's the fruit that's fallen on the ground. And what happens to fruit that's fallen on the ground? It what? It spoils. It rots. Okay? All of your low-hanging fruit leaks, steam traps, valves that leak. You pick them up today, what happens tomorrow? there's going to be more rotten on the ground. It's regressive, isn't it? You think, okay, well, I've done that today, I can relax. You're going to be going back time after time after time. Okay? So what you've got to do is get a little smarter. Get yourself a little step ladder. Now, most of you have seen this already, right? But it's in here because this point's an important point. Then, of course, you realize I want to get a little higher up the tree. Now, if you're Gary, what you do is you actually hire in a couple of day laborers from the South Pacific and you get them to take the risky jobs, right? Okay. For those of you that don't know, Gary occasionally calls upon my, uh, 
my services. I'm even cheaper than a Mexican day labourer. So. Um, it's, I think it's the only time in the history of the United States where someone's had two PhD qualified uh, slave labourers working for free for a day. Okay, but as you can see, to get higher up the tree, you've got to take a little risk, right? Does that still solve our problem long term? Is that our best practice solution? What's our best practice solution? Okay, safe, right? Got the tree covered? We're going to systematically harvest the whole tree. And what's more, next year, what can we do? Come back and harvest the tree. And now if we're smart, and of course we will have oversized our cherry picker, because that's what we do whenever we spec anything, right? As engineers, we oversize it. So when the tree's grown next year, we can still reach to the, the top of the tree. Okay, well, what does this really mean? Well, we need to have a paradigm shift, don't we? I'm sure your plants here are a lot like our plants in New Zealand. Are we there yet? Are we at best practice? Are we even close, in all honesty? There's a handful, right? Is it be fair? There's probably a handful of sites that are pretty close. Okay. The paradigm shift. When I say paradigm shift, what are we saying? We have to change the way we do things. We have to change our culture. We've already heard a great couple of talks about this this week. Okay. We've got to shift from firefighting and having our nice ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. See the little ambulance down the bottom? How effective do you think that thing is? Great for picking up the pieces, right? It gives the family something to bury. That's what the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff's all about. Okay. You know, the, the, uh, you know the, the boiler suit that they wear you know, doing your electrical testing? You know what we call that? That's the body bag so the family's got something left to bury. Okay, that's not the solution. Okay, what's the solution? You have an ultra probe in the MCC. You scan that cabinet before you open the darn thing. Okay, the boiler suit's not going to save you. Okay, so what's our new shift? You've got to look at the whole system. You've got to think strategically. What do I mean by think strategically? You smarter, work smarter, think objectively, yeah? Any more specific? Sorry? Three steps out? Well, yeah, I, I mean, are you going to win a chess game if you think three moves ahead? How many chess, how many chess games are you going to win if you're only thinking three moves ahead? Not many, right? Strategically, he's thinking much further afield than that, right? Okay, to do that, how do we do it? First of all, you've got to measure. If you don't measure it, how are you going to control it? If you can't control it, how are you going to improve it? Right? So we've got to measure. We've got to plan. Then we've got to act. Doesn't matter how strategic your plan might be if you've not done anything about it, you're still stuck up here, aren't you? Other than the fact that you're talking a few words and you're talking the talk. Okay. And then even once you're there, it's a process of continual improvement. Okay, so you've got the different levels of efficiency from basic housekeeping right through to com comprehensive system wide integration. So here's our system. And this is the key point I want to get across. When we talk about best practice with our STEAM system, what do we mean? This is the whole point of today's presentation. Right here, let's see how well you've been listening. Best practice in our STEAM system, what does it mean? Nope. Sorry? Of what process? So, so the boiler? So, so running the boiler as, as, as good as you can and as efficient as you can? Nope. 
Minimize waste? No, sorry. The three-legged stool, all right, you're getting there. Take account of what you have. What do you mean? I'll give you a chance to elaborate, give you a little bit of rope to see if we can hang you. <laughs> Thinking strategically here, the steam traps and everything else, least of your problems. That's basic housekeeping. We'll deal with that in a minute. We're, we're, you're still stuck down in the marshes, bogged down in the mud. I'm trying to raise our perspective here for a minute. What is our number one objective here? What's our number one priority? Why have we got this factory? What's that factory there to do? To, to, or to make money. How's it going to make money? Making product. Does making product have anything whatsoever to do with the boiler? Sorry? It's, it's an input, right? An input to be managed, but it's not what should be driving the process. Best practice, if you've got to go back to what it is you're really about. So the key point is, is we're making product, right? All happy with that? The number one important point, and this is where we start, is the process we use to make that product. Because here's the thing. The steam we use is purely a utility that we're going to tap into, right? It doesn't matter how efficiently and how little waste we have in the steam system. If we're wasting the steam because we're not using it correctly in the process, it doesn't matter how efficiently we're feeding the losses. We're just wasting money more efficiently than the next guy, that's all. But you're still wasting money, right? Okay, so what you've got is you've got your waste energy out of your process. But the key thing is this, and the title today was very deliberately deceptive. Best practice in terms of energy efficiency can never be applied just to your steam system. Because energy efficiency best practice can only apply to your process. Okay. Then what you're going to do is identify the minimum amount of steam that you're going to use, and then you're going to minimize your losses in that system, but that is purely nothing more than a utility being supplied to your process. How many sites are driven by the boiler operator saying, well, this is the steam you've got? Yeah, okay, so I mean, you're, well, well, hang on. Let, let's talk about this one for example, right? Okay. So what's your product? Steam. steam. So hang on. Well, what's your process? Your process is to make steam. So therefore, energy efficiency best practice for you is what? Exactly. You're an exception. Why? Because your product is the steam. Okay. Does the principle still apply? That was, that's, that's good. I love it. Okay, so the key point is this. When we talk about demand, what are we talking about? How much utility? When I say utility, what are we talking about? A little more work with me here. Come on. Come on, work with me a little. Hopefully this last 10 minutes hasn't been in vain. I'm using valuable minutes here. Remember I said forget about steam. It's about managing our inputs to the process. What are our inputs? They're written up there. It's not just steam. It's chilled water, hot water, water, gas, coal. Steam is just one of many inputs that need to be balanced. How do you minimize your demand for steam? Well, it's through maximizing your integration. You've got elements that need to be heated. You've got elements that need to be cooled. Maximize your integration of those so you use what you can that's got waste heat to heat what needs to be heated and use what needs to be heated to cool what you're otherwise going to blow out the stack, right? 
And so suddenly you're actually potentially reducing your energy demand by 20, 30 percent. 20, 30 percent going to have an impact on the bottom line? You think? A little more than fixing a few steam traps? Doesn't mean we don't do the steam traps. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So you've you've actually got a, an a, an integrated system. You're you're maximizing the utility of everything you've got, right? Instead of just having a letdown station where you take your 600 pound steam and let it down to 250 and just have that energy blown off, right? Okay. I mean that's what this is all about. Except with a factory, it's often a lot more complicated, right? Okay. But this is the point, if you're genuinely going to be at best practice, this is what you've got to wake up to and say, hey, we have to start doing things a little differently. And until you do that, you're back down at the bottom 25% of companies that are day to day wondering whether you're going to be open next week. How do you get out of that? This is what I'm talking about when I say we need a paradigm shift. We need to change the way that we look at these things. Demand, supply, distribution, they're all equally at work here. Okay, but remember, what's the key driver? The system as a whole and what we need in total and then minimizing the external inputs. Okay, so to put it simply, here's our process. Remember, our process is our priority, right? Why? That's where we're making our money. We making any money over here? Okay. It's, it's the, the, everyone does the same thing about maintenance, right? Is maintenance considered a money maker? What is it? It's a cost center, right? Okay. We are unfortunately sitting over here as another block supporting these guys to make money. It's as simple as that. And are we ever going to change that perspective? So we may as well embrace it, right? So there's our demand, there's our supply, there's our distribution. Okay? So this is the key point. We need to focus on over here, get maximum integration. Our steam traps and everything else over here are important. Okay? That's certainly going to help us to save some money, but we need to be looking much further afield. So if nothing else from today's presentation on STEAM, I hope you can take away this point. It's so important to be able to take a step back and look at these things strategically, okay? It really is that important. Okay, so... To reduce our utility, utility use, we're either going to need to increase our heat recovery or reduce our process demand. It's that simple. Now, Doug shaved 15 minutes off my time by giving you guys a long break, so I'm going to have to skip through a few of these uh, slides if that's okay. You all right with that? Because we're, we're, we're just about at beer o'clock. Um, so the key point is this. Remember, above all else, we have to focus on the process, okay? And this is where it gets tricky. We might have to be careful about how we manage things, but this is what we need to do, okay? How do you systematically reduce demand in real or complex processes? Can you do it on your own? You've got to get a team of people together, right? Various subject matter experts, get everyone together, it's back to the three-legged stool. If you're serious about doing this, you've got to take what I call an MDT or a multidisciplinary team approach. It's the only way you're ever going to be able to do it. Okay. Now, this is just a, uh, a diagram in here for those of you that want the notes. It, it, it's sort of self-explanatory. We're talking about taking hot streams in and they're cooled and as they're heating cold streams in that then get heated. It's effectively maximizing our use of waste heat, okay, 
and vice versa to minimize our utility input to the process. It's as simple as that. Okay, it gets complicated as you deal with process specifics, but this is the way you've got to start thinking about your steam system. You can't just think about the steam as the boiler over there and we just keep supplying more and more steam. Um, you've got to get out of that mindset. Okay, compressed air analogy. Demand side, okay, think of it as end users, demand for heating and cooling. Distribution network is how you're distributing your steam, condensate. Now, pop quiz, we'll see how well you've been listening. Is that all that's in our distribution system? What else is under distribution? All of our other utilities, right? Okay, and so this is where our mindset has to start changing. Utility loops, heat integration. Okay, the supply side, our boiler house. Do we want our boiler to be efficient? Yeah, of course we do. It, I, I just rubbished it before saying it wasn't the most important thing. Does it mean it isn't important? It's just about getting things in the right order. Okay, refrigeration, chilled water systems, cooling towers, utility integration, all of these things matter. It's about understanding how they fit in to the ecosystem, to the landscape, understanding how things are all coupled. Okay, so where are we going to start first? I'll come back to what you said, Doug, that's good. But ultimately, other than the housekeeping, if you're looking at all these things, you've got to start looking at how you're using everything because there's no point having the most efficiently tuned boiler, okay, if you're then going to reduce the demand and say so you've now got to get the thing whole retuned anyway, right? Now, the reality is, is you've got to get started, right? How, and, and the problem with getting started is your boss is going to want a payday this month, right? Is he going to tolerate you spending money for the next year without a return? Okay, so how do we get started? One step at a time and back to what our, our good friend Doug at the back said. You use that low-hanging fruit, the fruit on the ground that's rotting. Pick it up now while you can before it's completely rotted away. And that's how you build your program. But the smart thing to do is this. You need to use those easy wins as part of your ammunition to fund your bigger picture plan. If you go around and pick up all the easy pickings and say, oh, wow, I had a payback of four weeks. Well, the problem is, is you've already counted all those savings and so you've got no way of justifying how to get to the next step. And so you're now stuck. You have built the roadblock to prevent you from going any further. Do you get the point? This is why you've got to think a little bit more strategically. Maybe not quite look as good a, a legend as you could do today, but the big picture stuff, how are we going to eat the elephant? One bite at a time, right? How do we do that? Well, the key to life is balance. I like elephants. I've actually got a big picture of this. I bought this for my wife um, um, many years ago. I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Key to life is balance, okay? Key thing is, is you don't want to go in like, a, like a, a steam train today and pick up all these easy wins and then shoot yourself in the foot because you can't justify anything else, okay? So you've got to have a plan. Basic housekeeping, come up with a strategic battle plan, get to work, can eat the elephant. So basic housekeeping, leaks, you've got traps, valves, pipe work, heat exchanges. Okay, all of these things can help you to get started. You got a question? No, no, okay. Okay, steam traps. How are we going to do our steam traps? Ultrasound, infrared, we're going to monitor them. Okay, get on top of it, do it all properly. Think about when to check, what to look for, what to record. Okay, I'm going to skip the valve case study. Anyone wants to know about that, come back and chat to me because I, I want you to get you to um, get you to your, 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 your drinks in a minute. Air heaters, okay, common design problems, okay. You can fix your steam system and your traps and everything else. If your heaters aren't designed right, you're going to continually have problems regardless, okay. 
It's a picture of a heater, two million dollar air heater in its first year, failed, spewing uh, condensate into a process, okay, on a 200 million dollar plant. Not good enough, okay, but the stuff's out there because it hasn't been designed right. What did I say before? Attention to the detail, right? Getting the specifications right. Pipe work, water hammer, condensate lines, flash steams. Um, we don't, we, I had no intention of actually addressing these issues today. It was just more to say, hey, look, yes, think strategically, and this is all the steps that you can use to get started. Okay, identify the easy wins. Do it, save money now. Okay, so you can then get to work on the intermediate opportunities. Okay, that gives you a few more wins. It's going to take a little longer, but that enables you to build towards your long-term strategic plan. Okay? It's how you generate your roadmap, gentlemen and ladies. I know it, 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 it's an awful lot to take in. The key take-home message today is what? Sorry? Elephants taste good, yeah. <laughs> Got to have money to make money. Get started, yeah. Have a plan. You've got to change the way we think. We've got to change the paradigm, okay? There you go right there. There's the four questions you've got to ask yourself, okay? Now, for those of you that want to copy these presentations, I'll more than happily give it. I actually have a little uh, handout for you as a parting thought. Now, um, who's my helpers? I'll get you to come forward. It's a little closing thought for you all. I just want to share this little poem for you. Though to walk near its crest was so pleasant, but over its terrible edge there had slipped a duke and full many a peasant. So the people said something would have to be done but their projects did not at all tally. Some said put up a fence round the edge of the cliff, some an ambulance down in the valley. But the cry for the ambulance carried the day for it spread through the neighbouring city. A fence may be useful or not, it is true, but each heart became full of pity. For those who slipped over the dangerous cliff and the dwellers in highway and alley gave pounds and gave pence not to put up a fence but an ambulance down in the valley. For the cliff is all right if you're careful, they said, and if folks even slip and are dropping, it isn't the slipping that hurts them so much as the shock down below when they're dropping. Or stopping, sorry. So today after day, as these mishaps occurred, quick forth with those rescuers Sally to pick up the victims who fell off the cliff with their ambulance down in the valley. Then an old sage remarked, it's a marvel to me that people give far more attention to repairing results than to stopping the cause when they'd much, marther, much better aim at prevention. Let us stop it at source, all this mischief, cried he. Come neighbours and friends, let us rally. If the cliff we will fence, we might almost dispense with the ambulance down in the valley. Oh, he's a fanatic, the others rejoiced. Dispense with the ambulance, never He'll dispense with all charities too if he could. No, no. We'll support them forever. Aren't we picking up folks just as fast as they fall and shall this man dictate to us, shall he? Why should people of sense stop to put up a fence while the ambulance works in the valley? But the sensible few, that's you guys, who are practical too, will not bear with such nonsense much longer. They believe that prevention is better than cure and their party will soon be the stronger. Encourage them then with your purse, voice, and pen, and while other philanthropists dally, they will scorn all pretense and put up a stout fence on the cliff that hangs over the valley. Better guide well the young than reclaim them when old, for the voice of true wisdom is calling to rescue the fallen as good but as best to prevent other people from falling. Better close up the source of temptation and crime than deliver from dungeon or galley Better put up a fence round the top of the cliff than an ambulance down in the valley. That's my challenge to you today, gentlemen and ladies. We want you to have a think about that. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if we're going to change the way we do things, we have to make a change. 
If you want a different result, you have to do what you're doing a little differently. There's three types of people in this world. There's people that make things happen, people that watch things happen, and people that sit back and wonder, what the heck did I just miss? My question for you today is, which one of those are you? And hopefully next year when we come back at Ultrasound World 9, okay, we're going to have plenty of wonderful stories of how we've actually had some great progress and we've made some things happen. If you have any questions, you've got my uh, details there. Feel free to send through an email. I'm happy to provide any assistance that I can. So thank you very much.